All right then, with this example, the first task is to work out as usual our reactions. So we know we've got three reactions here. We can say by inspection that the horizontal reaction is zero at A because there's no horizontal forces coming on. So let's start off by taking the sum of the vertical forces. So we have a vertical force at A and B to determine. So we'll say the sum of the forces in the Y direction must equal zero. Upwards forces are positive. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we have VA. In fact, let's just, let's not skip too many steps. Let's just draw on VA here, unknown vertical reaction at A, and we'll draw on VB here as well. VB. Okay, right back to where we were. So VA plus VB minus the first distributed load is 5 kilonewtons per meter times it acts over 5 meters second distributed load also acts downwards so it's a negative 20 kilonewtons per meter times 5 meters minus the last distributed load 3 kilonewtons per meter times again 5 meters minus the 40 kilonewton point load and all of that has to equal zero and so simplifying all that, we have VA plus VB must equal 180 kilonewtons. So that's our first equation. We can box that off for, for the time being and just leave it there. Now we're going to take the sum of the moments. Now we, we got to take the sum of the moments about one of the points through which an unknown passes, right? Because I need to eliminate one of my unknowns from this next equation. So if I take the sum of the moments about point A, well then I eliminate VA from that moment equation because it passes through the point about which I'm taking moments and there's no lever arm. So I'm going to take the sum of the moments about point A and I'm going to say they have to equal zero. I'm defining clockwise moments as positive. We'll start off with the moment effect of the five kilonewtons per meter. So it will generate a positive moment about point A. So I'm going to have five kilonewtons per meter times it acts over five meters and its resultant will act halfway along, which will give me a lever arm of 2.5 meters. Okay, so, and I'll only do this for the first one just to, so you get the idea. But we're dealing with this guy here and what we're saying is the resultant of that force, if I was to replace that distributed load with a single force, that would be a single force with a value of five kilonewtons per meter multiplied by five meters, which would give me 25 kilonewtons. And the lever arm of that resultant force about point A, the point at which I'm taking moments in this case, is half of five meters, which is 2.5 meters. So that's what that's all about down there. So we will then add on the moment effect of the 20 kilonewtons per meter. So that's going to be 20 kilonewtons per meter times it acts over five meters and it has a lever arm of its resultant of 7.5 meters plus three kilonewtons per meter times five meters times a lever arm of 12.5 meters plus, let's add on plus 40 kilonewtons, uh, it's just kilonewtons actually, it's not kilonewtons per meter. So 40 kilonewtons times 12 meters, times 12 meters, and then minus 15 meters times VB, and all that has to equal zero. And when you simplify all that out, we only have one unknown in there, it's VB. We can solve for VB and it's equal to 81.32 kilonewtons. Excellent. That's where this equation up here comes back in, so we can sub VB into that guy and get VA, so we'll just say, therefore, VA is equal to, now I'm after reading the wrong number here, it turns out that, that VB actually resolves to 98.67 kilonewtons, and that means that VA is actually 81.32 kilonewtons. Okay, so now let me see what's the next thing we want to do. We want to set up our shear force diagram next. Now, in order to evaluate our shear force diagram, let's look at what we know. Well, we know we're dealing with UDLs, uniformly distributed loads predominantly across this structure. And that means that the shear force diagram is going to have in those regions a constant slope. So the shear force diagram is essentially going to be made up of a series of straight lines, straight line segments. We also have a point load in there, and that point load is going to give us a step change in the shear force diagram. So for the purposes of, of getting a complete set of notes here, let's just make a quick note of what I just said. So we'll say we're going to look at the shear force diagram. 
And what we know about that shear force diagram, if we summarize what we know, well, we know we've got UDLs, and therefore, due to a UDL, that's a uniformly distributed load, the slope of the shear force diagram is constant, which means it's going to be made up of a series of straight lines. Okay, and that's all based on this relationship which we derived dv dx equal to minus w, where w is the distributed load magnitude. What else did we say? We said we have one point load, one point load, and that would mean therefore there'll be a step change in the shear force diagram. So at this point we can go ahead and sketch out that shear force diagram. So at this point, we're able to construct our shear force diagram by following the loads across the structure. So this reaction here of 81.32, starting on the left, is going to cause our shear force diagram to rise up to a value of 81.32. So we'll just label that on there. Now we have our the influence of our UDL, and that's going to cause the shear force diagram to reduce at a rate of 5 kilonewtons for every meter I move across to the right. So by the time I've moved 5 meters across, we'll have reduced by 25. So we end up with, we're coming down in a straight line. Remember, the constant value of the distributed load means we have a constant slope to our shear force diagram. So that's going to bring me down to a value here. Now that value is going to be 56.32. That's obtained as 81.32 minus 5 kilonewtons per meter times 5 meters, which is equal to 56.32. So that's where that comes from. All right, then what happens, we then hit the 20 kilonewtons per meter uh, UDL, and that's going to cause things to reduce more rapidly. It's going to cause a shear force to reduce more rapidly at a rate of 20 kilonewtons for every meter we move across. So by the time we move across the full five meters, we're going to have moved or reduced the shear force by 20 times five, which is 100 kilonewtons. So if I take 100 off of my 56.32, that'll bring me down to minus 43.68. So just sketch it on there. So that's going to be minus 46, oh no, 43, minus 43.68. And that's obtained as 56.32 minus 20 times 5. Now we have the influence of the 3 kilonewtons per meter. So by the time I've come across the 2 meters until I get over to the point load here, that will have just reduced by 6 kilonewtons. So that's 3 kilonewtons per meter times 2 meters, which will be reduced by another further 6. And again, the fact that this is a constant between here and here, a constant value of distributed load, means it's a straight line shear force diagram, an inclined straight line. So that's going to put the value in here at minus 49.68. Then we have this 40 kilonewtons here. That's going to cause, as we've said, a step change in the shear force diagram. It's going to cause the shear force diagram to drop down in a single step down at amount 40, right? So let me see that there. That drop is equal to 40 kilonewtons, which puts the value down here, the value here, at being minus 89.68 okay and then we have the udl here the three kilonewtons per meter continuing to reduce the shear force down by another three meters times three kilonewtons per meter so by the time i get to the end over here i'm at a value of minus 98.68 and then, sure enough, we have the value of the reaction on the right-hand side here is equal to 98.68, or 0.67, some rounding errors there, which is going to cause that shear force diagram to rise all the way back up to zero, which is what we would expect. So now we might want to know, one thing that we might want to know from this diagram is what at what location is this shear force zero? And that's an important point for us, because where the shear force is zero, we know the bending moment is a maximum. Okay, based on the other differential relationship we derived. So I need to work out where that value of L is. Well, that's relatively straightforward. 
what I'm able to do, let me just give a little heading here. So how do we find that? Well, we take the value of the shear here, 56.32 minus, it reduces at a rate of 20 kilonewtons per meter. So 20 times what distance would let all of that equal to zero? And we just solve for x, okay? And so x in this case is equal to 2.82 meters, and that's to the right of c. And so we know, I mentioned the differential relationship earlier, well this is what I was talking about, we know that dm dx is equal to v. So this guy here we know is the slope of the bending moment diagram, and if the slope is equal to zero, we know we have a local maximum in the bending moment diagram. All right, so let's take a quick break there. We've worked out the reactions, we've worked out the shear force diagram. In the next video, we'll come back and work out our bending moment diagram. So as I say, take a quick break.